Welcome to the Southeast Asian Sales Competition Project with me, Colin McKenzie of Edinburgh Napier University. And with me today, I have... Hi, my name is Alex. I'm a lecturer and researcher at the University of Applied Sciences Wiener Neustadt. And also today we have... Johannes Reiterer. I'm working at the University of Applied Sciences Wiener Neustadt as well. And I'm heading up a master program in the area of sales, which is called Sales Management for Technical Products and Services. And Alex, uh, what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, well, Colin, the last time we spoke, we looked at the learnings from the first CSEC, the first Southeast Asian sales competition in Thailand. And uh, two things we found out were the comments from students as well as lectures were that the buyers who acted as the buyers in the sales competition, they were sometimes not 100% consistent in the message, which means there was a little bit of an issue uh, in the briefing. And secondly, some of the students commented that the case was for them difficult to understand and some things were not clear. So, and I thought since Johannes, he's the competition director of the European sales competition for this year. And of course, he's very much involved in writing cases and briefing buyers. And he did this already before. So I thought, why not having a talk with Johannes and ask him about his learnings and his ideas, how to brief buyers and how to write a proper case. That's a great idea. Johannes, tell us briefly about the European sales competition, what's happening this year? The European sales competition, competition should have happened on the 19th and 20th of May 2020, but due to the corona crisis, we were planning another competition in December instead of May. So as you know it right now, the situation uh, due to the coronavirus is still a bit unclear. A huge amount of uncertainty and therefore we take into the consideration that maybe the European sales competition 2020 in December should be an online competition. And what changes have you got to make in order to make an online competition? Mm. Yeah, first of all, you always think about technical difficulties, right? Uh, because you cannot react very fast when you're playing an online competition. So first of all, our initial idea was to extend the time span of the competition. Originally, we planned a two-day event. Now, we think about the two-and-a-half-day events. So, in addition to the competition, we are planning more, let's call it, sales-related content, which means we are setting up more site events, more speeches, more presentations about the topic sales and personal selling. And in addition to that, of course, we have to plan interaction points between participants, professors, sponsor, more in detail. So we have to think about more concepts, more ideas to increase the, increase the engagement of participants and also the involvement, the emotional involvement in such an online atmosphere. Right? And specifically what Alex was mentioning about the buyers and the cases, have you made changes to that? And if not, are you using the same ones? And can you give us Talk us through that a bit more, give more detail, please. The case or the story of the competition and the briefing of the buyer are the most important elements of a sales competition. So first of all, of course, we have already established a case and based on the idea, based on the scenario, it was not very difficult to adapt the case to an online competition, to an online situation, because that's the reality so far. You know? Buying and selling is done online at the moment. In addition to that, you have to think about the briefing of the buyers. First of all, the briefing of the buyers, again, is, is very, very important. And we were setting up a quite detailed briefing document for the buyers. In this briefing document, we were always thinking about two different approaches or two different elements. First of all, you have to describe the situation of the company really in detail. So that means you should think about environmental factors which are influencing the way how the purchasing process in the company is done. So my first initial advice when people are setting up a case is 
always think about the situation from the customer organization, from the organization who is buying a product or a service. Uh, think about their issues, think about the process, think about the people involved in it. And based on that, you're setting up the storyline. And based on that, you're setting up the number of rounds which are needed in order to, to create a good role playing and to create a good story. This is advice number one. Um, in addition to that, the briefing of the buyer should always have a focus on general aspects, like what's the current situation in the company? So make a clear announcement about people in the organization who are important. Um, give buyers an in-depth in -depth information about the situation of the company. Give them detailed information about issues in the company. Uh, mention some problems at the beginning and write them down because it's very, very important that the buyer is acting consistent in such role playings so that every participant in a specific round is getting the same chance to collect points and to go to the next job. So first of all, the environmental friend framework of the role playing should be standardized. But in addition to that, you're always acting with humans. So there should be another element where the buyer itself can also add his personality. So the way how he's reacting to questions, the way how he is answering questions, uh, the way how he is challenging a participant, for example. So that should be free, more or less. This should be done or this should be set it up by the person who is playing the buyer in the role play. But so, Johannes, if I understand it correctly, if I play a buyer in the role play, uh, I got all the basic information, I got all uh, the background information about product, company, environment. However, I'm not playing a different person than I am in reality. So, I should play myself, but being in the position of a buyer, but I'm not overdoing uh, things I wouldn't do. So if I'm a very straightforward, focused person in facts and figures, I will also ask for facts and figures and I will not suddenly change into a different person looking only for a personal relationship, or right? Exactly, exactly. This is very important, yeah? But keep in mind that, again, as I mentioned it before, always act in a consistent way, mm -hmm. yeah? So it's, 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 it would not be appropriate if you're grumpy in one sales conversation and very friendly in another one. Yeah? So be consistent, but be yourself. Can I just add a point there? Um, by consistent, you mean consistent in being, if you're going to be challenging, to be reasonably challenging in the others, but not necessarily to the point where if you didn't let the very first um, student complete the sale, you, you're not going to say, well, the second one won't complete the sale or get the close because, you know, if their technique is better. In other words, you vary the response depending on how good the student is at the, their job, essentially, which is to sell you something. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add to that, Alec? Uh, yeah, well, one thing what I observed when I was a judge in one of the sales competitions that for the buyer is of course because they, you have the human element in there so i think if you don't play someone else you just play yourself i think that's the best version but of course there's always a different interaction because of course the uh, competitor so the student who comes in the one opens very friendly and ask you about your private life ask about some small talk yeah? and then of course you as a buyer you will act differently than for example we had one competitor in the last sales competition uh, she came in and she started immediately coming straight to the point and of course then the buyer was also a little bit like coming straight to the point so it's of course always an element of interaction but as a buyer you should make it as consistent as possible mm -hmm. to give every competitor the same chance and the same information mm. but of when, course it's always the interaction coming out of it yeah i have to accept that not everybody uh, is passionate uh, about understanding the brief and not all buyers will be consistent no matter how much effort you put in but is there you know at least you can try as much as possible to try and get the consistency which is important exactly mm. So okay. uh, that's really interesting, Johannes, what you've said there. Alex, 
What do you take away from this conversation? So what I take away from it for future sales competitions and uh, to have an idea how to brief the buyers is that the buyers, they should be briefed very detailed. They should know about the problems, about the environment of the company and about the situation. And for the buyer, it's very important not to play someone else. So keep your own personality and pass on in a very consistent way all the information necessary for the competitor, for the student uh, to be successful. So, and this also links to the case because Johannes spoke before about the case as well, that of course the case will cover the environment, the situation, the problems. So everything what is important for the student as a competitor to know about, and of course also for the buyer to be consistent and to be very detailed in their role. So that's what I take with me right now. Johannes, did I miss something? I think you have summarized it in a great way. Yeah. Well, again, thank you very much, guys. That was a fantastic uh, piece of information. Thank you to Johannes for his first time here in our podcast. You're welcome. Hopefully not our last time. I hope to speak mm. to you soon. And uh, thank you again, Alex, for your great contribution. Uh, and I look forward to seeing everybody in the not-too-distant future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.